At the core of any reseller's decision, the transition into the world of managed services is often ultimately the decision to move to a SaaS business model. In the following broadcast, I will share with you three perspectives on the value of SaaS and worry-free services, both for traditional partners and MSPs. Our aim is to give you as much information as possible that will allow you to decide if moving to SaaS is the correct decision for your business. So we invited some experts in their respective fields to talk to you about the value of SaaS in the context of their day-to-day -day jobs and share their experience and knowledge. First up, you will hear from Robin Adi of Canalis, the channel analyst that knows more about channel dynamics and developing trends than almost anybody I've ever had the pleasure of talking to. We will then move to the product experts and hear from Amin and David, two of our most senior sales engineers in Trend Micro and experts in all things cybersecurity. Finally, we will then wrap up with Ken Crowley, the man responsible for leading a team of successful account managers whose primary job is to position and ultimately sell this solution to our channel partners. So let's get started and hear from a good friend of Trend Micro and leading channel analyst with Canalis, Mr. Robin Adi. Hello, Robin. How are you? Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to have this chat with us here today. Um, just to kind of get things started, Robin, I wonder, could you give our viewers just a quick introduction of who you are and what you do? Yeah, so um, I'm a senior analyst at Canalis. I work in the channels team, so we focus very much on, on channels go to market strategy across all technologies. Uh, I've been with Canalis about six years. Um, we focus primarily on, on the EMEA region um, for my side of things, but I also, load, I also lead our global managed services analysis research. Um, which is, again, is, is kind of managed services analysis across all partner types and across all technologies. So, Robin, when we talk about the evolution of solutions like worry-free services, the key driver, obviously, is always demand. You know, at the core of every decision we make about the development of our solutions is addressing the demands of the market. We spend, as you know, a lot of our time at Trend Micro talking to analysts just like yourself so as to affirm or challenge the decisions we are making around our solutions. So to begin, I think we should start with what is probably the simplest but most important question every cybersecurity vendor should ask. And that is, where do you see the greatest opportunities this year from a cybersecurity standpoint? And what products are likely to be in demand and why? Well, I think that, I mean, what is, what is probably top of mind right now for everyone, and, and it's always related to, to headlines, and headlines really do drive demand a lot of the time in, in, in the end customer base. Um, is ransomware. And ransomware really does, of course, um, it, it comes up and, and hits everyone. And, and really, the, the main discussion, I, I think, for, for everyone is not just about how you protect yourself, but, but how, you, uh, how you come back from a, a situation like that. And that can include not just products, but also intelligence and investment and skills. Um, and I think that's where we're seeing a huge amount of investment from, from customers and, and partners this year. Um, particularly channel partners are transitioning towards a kind of managed services model, adding managed security services. This is where things like endpoint detection and response um, and XDR come in. And that's why they're so important is because they allow partners to, to move kind of up the stack in terms of uh, complexity and their ability to respond to certain incidents. Because very much over the last few years, it, it's been about well, how do, we, how do we respond? How do we create incident response plans? How do we help our customers to get back from some of these issues? Um, and I think that's probably the, the thing that's driving things in endpoints, in, particularly in things like you know, the server technology and, and trying to work out how we protect our, our users as well when they're working from home. One of the other things that's, that's very much coming through as well in terms of products is, um, is just more of that analytics, more of that analysis technology to understand what's happening on the network um, and to be a bit more granular about that. So um, a little bit less, um, some, some of the technologies can be a bit kind of broad brush um, and they allow a lot of things through and they, they don't necessarily capture um, really important details about what's going on in the network. But I think, and, and that's where we're seeing things like exfiltration analysis become really important because once something's in, the most important thing is to understand, well, what's communicating with the outside? And if you can analyze what's coming out, then you can stop things as, as they're happening. So that's become increasingly popular over the last couple of years as well, in conjunction with the rest of your security stack. I think the last thing that we anticipate really is, is just more and more on network security investment, just because as people are moving back to, to offices um, in a hybrid model, whether it's two or three days a week, one of the things that's become very clear is that people's home working environments, home networks, their broadband, that the, the use that they have, the multiple devices they have, it's become you know, a real nightmare for IT teams and, and IT estates to secure. So that's the kind of thing where I think we're gonna see a significant amount of investment 
from end customers and, and partners in deploying things that will help multi-factor authentication um, for customers on, on, on their, their basic devices, their email servers and, and things like that. And it's just kind of really important that it, the partners are, are, are ramped up to be able to, to serve that demand because I think it, it's really coming kind of very, very heavily this year. And, and one of the things that we've seen in our latest quick polls is just how difficult it is to get hold of skills as it's always been in the security space. Um, you know, it's kind of top three in, in terms of difficulties that we found from, from partners this year was investment in skills, new customer acquisition and, and supply chains for, for those in the hardware space. Um, so those are kind of the key areas that we're looking at in over the next 18 months, really, as, as, as far as we can predict ahead. So, Robin, from that perspective, then, what difficulties do partners face in expanding their cybersecurity portfolios and capabilities? And I suppose, even more importantly, how do they overcome these? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, skills is always the perennial issue that people talk about, but it's, it's not, you know, it's not just about, you know, kind of getting people in and getting people certified. It's also about understanding where you sit within within the kind of regulatory space that's going on. So, I mean, you know, we, we've seen recently that, you know, in the UK and in the EU and, and you know, for partners in Asia and in Singapore as well, there's you know, announcements around managed services provision and cloud services provision and partners need to be aware of the fact they're going to have to adhere to certain rules that governments are putting in place. Now, an example in the UK, for example, that they're, 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 they're trying to collaborate or they're asking advice from MSPs or anyone that offers a, a service provider model um, on exactly what kind of rules and regulations they should adhere to, what kind of norms should be in place. In the EU, we've already seen um, the ENISA are, are implementing cybersecurity frameworks to understand what kind of norms and certifications partners should have in order to be able to offer to their customers something that, that is, is, has a rubber stamp on it. The reason why these are important is because some of the other frameworks are incredibly expensive um, for partners to, to adhere to. So one of the difficulties we've seen from, from channel partners moving to a managed services model for anyone adding security services to their portfolio, an ISO certification or a NIST certification can be incredibly expensive if you're not going all in. And that's where I think there's kind of a chicken and egg that happens with, with the demand. Your customers have to be mature enough to understand what these norms are, what these certifications are, in order for that to be a differentiator for you as a business. But for you then to invest in that without having the end customer demand in place already, it's a risk. So partners are having to make those decisions, not just about bringing in skills, it's also about knowing that there's gonna be demand on the back end. So some of it is, is about um, end customer kind of awareness and helping them to understand uh, what the threats are, what the risks are and, and, and how partners can help. Um, and also, how they themselves as partners become their own managed service provider. Because yeah. I think if you're, if you're a reseller or if you're anyone that's, that's offering any kind of cloud or, or security service, and realistically, any partner should be at least looking at the, the possibility of adding these skills because of the amount of demand in the market. Um, there does have to be, it does have to be an awareness um, on how you yourself remain secure. So that itself becomes a differentiator because you're managing customer data. We've seen from, recent headlines, just how, how difficult, how damaging that can be to a business. But, you know, the awareness of the fact that these things happen, you yourself make yourself secure, that creates a framework for you to, to provide to your customers as a service. So incident response as a service, um, you know, that's the kind of thing that, that really is, is a very powerful message uh, for partners to be able to pass on. So trying to cover off all of these areas is, is extremely difficult, particularly if you're planning for what you invest in um, and where you put your money. Um, but uh, I think that the demand from customers is, is certainly going to be there. So it's just about understanding which technologies you focus on um, that are most in demand in, in, in your particular region or in your country or even in the region of your country that you work in, if you're a specialist in, in a particular area. Um, and also understanding the vertical and the regulation space and how that's likely to affect you over the next couple of years. So staying up on those government headlines, understanding what's going to be demanded of you. Um, it's a huge amount for part to stay on top of, but also at the same time, we know that you know, the channel is, is, is extremely strong and resilient in this area. Yeah, like it, you touch on the, the customer need, but I think one big thing that's coming out of the recent ransomware attacks as well is customer scrutiny of their partners. Um, as um, you mentioned, it's the awareness of the customer to, I suppose, now actually gain an understanding that that person that's supplying me, whether it's a VAR, reseller, MSP, that's either selling me or supplying me a security solution or service. Is essentially sometimes the weak point that's going to give access into my um, um, infrastructure, into my environment, into our ecosystem. 
like I, what, what we're seeing over the last couple um, of weeks and couple of months is partners I wouldn't say a silence but certainly a kind of a standing still of partners that kind of go okay something has changed here there's there's certainly more scrutiny coming from our customers and the customers are getting noisier towards our setup and what we need to do so what can partners do in the face of these ever increasing threats you know in relation to supply chain ransomware attacks and the things that are going on with the integrations that they have with these RMM or PSA vendors that have been targeted and as you and I probably both know they're just the start of bigger vendors that are going to be targeted very, very soon, where these, these cyber criminals see them as the honeypot, the weak point, the access point to get to these customers. What can partners do here? It's terrible to say, but one thing that's useful about these incidents is that there is a reassessment of yeah. what people are doing and what they're doing wrong. Um, it can be very easy, particularly if, if you're a partner or a vendor, you've got your head down, you're worried about your competition, you're probably not thinking about what's happening outside, you've got a thousand things happening at once and you don't necessarily always review where you're, where you're vulnerable. Um, and that's, that's true for vendors as it, as it is for partners. We've seen in, in a number of these recent incidents and in all incidents um, that there is, there is often some awareness internally about the vulnerability that exists and that, that has been exploited. Um, it's just that they haven't got round to fixing it. Um, now, in the case of, of, of Kaseya and, and VSA, they were in the process of fixing that issue. Um, and that's kind of what's sad. They were made aware of it, um, I think, by Microsoft researchers. They, um, and, and, and Microsoft is, is, is obviously you know, one of the big names in terms of you know, making sure that all the Microsoft estate is secure because so much of our business is based on it. And they spend huge amounts of money and resources on making sure that they are up to date on where their threats are in, in their ecosystem as well. So kind of staying on top of their intelligence threat feeds is, 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 is incredibly important. So one of the things that came out at the, the, um, the recent attack is, is obviously there's been a lot of advice on, on partners on what they can do. Now, we talked about multi-factor authentication. That's kind of, it's kind of important. But to look into the, the details of what happened in the recent attack, one of the, the, the purposes of, of the attack was to get round Windows Defender, um, essentially to, to get round that two-factor authentication that was in place already. So even if you had set that up properly, it's still not a guarantee. So we talked a bit about incident response earlier, and this is where this is where I think things are really important. Tabletop exercises are number one in terms of what partners should be doing. Again, it's hard sometimes when you've got your head down and just focusing on driving revenue and making sure that your, your margins are strong throughout the year to, to allocate resources to, to incident response, tabletop exercises, to understanding how you respond to, to an issue, how you spot an issue when it's happening, and what kind of processes you put in place to shut certain things down. Do we shut down a server? Do we shut down our, our cloud environment? Um, who do we tell when that happens? What do we put in place? Do we have lawyers on the phone that we talk to and say, this is happening? Do we call our insurance company? We see cyber insurance has you know, expanded massively in the last couple of years, um, which I think there's a bit of a threat to a, there's a bit of a kind of potential of a moral hazard in terms of cyber insurance, yeah. which I'm slightly concerned about. Um, people thinking that maybe that, that they don't have to put certain things in place. And I think there has to be probably more work from the insurance industry to understand exactly what MSPs do and what customers need to do to secure yeah, themselves. It, it, is, is that not going to be very similar to your car insurance that if you get the car crash, you, you didn't do this, this and this, so we're not going to cover you. Like, I mean, you have to enable the full policy in order to be able to redeem on that policy. And I think cybersecurity is going to follow a very similar route. Yeah, I think so. And, and I think that that's where I think that the insurance company is going to get more sophisticated in terms of what they should expect from partners. But this is also where things like incident response plans come in because, you know, it will do things like lower your premiums, for example. If you yeah. have a really solid incident response plan, it's going to be important for your insurance. Now, I do think it's important to, to explore insurance and, and you should... As a partner, you should you should absolutely be be invested in this if you're providing security services. Because if you don't, and something happens with with a customer, or a customer's is is it at fault if we can use that word for or, or or is caught out by an issue, then their first issue is their first kind of call is probably going to be to you as an MSP or a partner and say this has yeah. happened. Why why haven't you secured me? And and that's important. But I think if we if we look at things like incident response, tabletop exercises. And then on top of that, if you can, and, and again, it's difficult, is to audit the tech that you use, all of the tools that you use to help you manage your customers. Um, 
you know, you have to you have to go after that. You have to attack that stuff to see where its vulnerabilities are, because you're not likely to get the information on where the vulnerabilities are from the vendor. They're not going to tell you this is where we're weakest. What you need to do is to test exactly what, what the issues yeah. are and stay on top of others who do this themselves. You know, threat researchers out there are constantly looking for, for weaknesses in, in common tools that we use, whether it's RMM, PSA, whether it's you know, exchange servers, whatever it is. All of the tools we use, that there are ways around them. So you have to yourself be proactive in understanding how to get around them, um, or at the very least be following threat research that can, that can get you up to speed on what the vulnerabilities are in, in your IT estate before some of these issues happen. And once you know those things, you can be aware at the very least of where, where that, that issue is likely to come if something's, if something's going to get in. You might not be able to do anything about it, but you can at least prepare for it. It sounds kind of terrible, but actually... I think we should now come to a mature realization that um, you should just be prepared and aware and assume that you're already under attack. Assume that you're already dealing with the worst possible scenario. Prepare for it and now work backwards. Yeah, you are touching on some huge points that's really come to the front over the last couple of months. I mean, the first thing around that, as you said, the cyber insurance, um, we're kind of using the analogy of, you know, you can buy a cybersecurity solution similar to you buy an alarm for your house. But if you don't alarm the window or the, 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 the door upstairs or whatever, then you need to fully use the product in order to be able to say, yeah, we were fully protected. And we saw that with our own solutions and um, certain features needed to be enabled that would protect you against these um, 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 ransomwares and um, um, cybersecurity attacks. The other element as well that's coming out and I think you touched on it is, you know, assessing their own environment and certainly around a worry free services solution. We're now seeing the true value of an NFR and not for resale license. And what we're saying to our partners is use it. Use it yourself within your own business. Assess your own um, systems. Assess everything so that you know then, as you said, it's not until you actually you know, run these products and actually start using these products that you can really see where you're potentially vulnerable. But it is very difficult for a partner to stand up and kind of go, this is where we're weakest. And the vendor is not going to say, this is where I believe we're weakest. And I think that's a key point. But it's a complex time, I think, both for any partner, whether you're a VAR, traditional reseller, MSP, MSSP. But is there anything else partners need to be aware as they go through the next phase of what we're seeing again is this massive security transformation? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the key issue, we touched on it a little bit earlier, is, is, um, is, to, be aware of, um, is to be aware of the kind of the, the pressures that, that are coming down the line externally from, from you know, either government entities or from what kind of new kinds of certifications that are going to be required of you as a partner as 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 you move forward, um, but if you you can stay on if you stay on top of these things and you understand it and, and they're all regional so they're going to be in country they're going to be in region um, they're going to be specific to, to to whatever your environment is but they're also going to be verticalized as well so you know if okay. you're in a particular vertical segment you got to think. Um, you know, financial services, for example, healthcare, education, these are, these are heavily regulated areas that, that require partners to jump through a lot of hoops in order to be able to provide services to customers in these areas. Um, it's a good example. Um, now, it's out of Singapore, but actually, I think what's, what's interesting about it is, you know, it's the kind of environment where they do have a lot of kind of relatively forward thinking um, mindset from, um, from partners in terms of um, serving people in particularly in financial services areas because of the importance of financial services to that sector. So as an example, um, the, the, the authority on, on financial services there has mandated that all uh, customers must uh, be aware of uh, their cloud service providers. And in this case, they're talking about people like AWS and Google and, and Microsoft. Um, and the, the services they provide, the data security they have, the sovereignty you have, um, and also, they're not caught up in, in just being provided by one by one provider. They have to spread their investment across different providers. Now, for partners, the importance is if they're providing that service um, and they're, they're a reseller or they're a managed service provider or cloud service provider on behalf of one of these vendors, they too are going to have to adhere to some of these regulations. Now, that's just an example of, of different hoops that you're going to have to jump through and things you're going to be prepared for that you have to answer questions on and that you have to be able to, you know, essentially fill out forms in triplicate on. And that's going to take up part of the time of your business. It's admin that doesn't drive revenue, but it is an important guard for your business in terms of safeguarding yourself and future-proofing yourself. So it's exactly the same in, in, in any region. We see huge amounts of it now. The EU is, is just, you know, 
is, is really expanding its, its understanding of cloud sovereignty in terms of uh, security frameworks as well. You know, we've seen in France um, already, there have been a number of kind of cloud builds that are all about cloud sovereignty. It's all about making sure that data is secure within the country you're in. And this is the kind of thing that filters through to customers very quickly. They want to be aware of all of the issues that are out there. And as a partner, you have to be able to answer some of these questions. So you may have the technology in place. You may be investing in skills. You may even kind of be aware of how to um, acquire new customers in, in as we come out of a pandemic and it's been so difficult to acquire new customers. All of those things are going on, but maybe you have, you're not necessarily aware of all of the, the regulation and the frameworks that are coming through from your local government or from the vertical pressures that are going on in a particular space. So if you work in any of the financial services hubs across Europe, if you work particularly in healthcare and life sciences, you have to understand, be aware of what's coming down the road. And it's all of that information, it's all of that admin of your business that actually helps you differentiate your business against other competitors that perhaps aren't necessarily aware of um, what they need to do in order to be part of certain frameworks. Um, so I think that's that's really the kind of thing that, that from the external perspective, outside of the security, outside of the kind of day-to-day -day running of your business, that partners you know, have to be aware of. And it's it's really hard for them to, to dedicate time and resource to these things, because as we know, you know, you dedicate all of your resource to whatever drives revenue, whatever whatever drives margins, um, and admin can sometimes fall fall to the wayside. But it's so important if you are if you are providing services to customers that understanding administration of your business and and in some cases automation of parts of your business um, can be absolutely key to this. So work on on everything that you that you have. Work on every element, every part of the environment that governs your business, whether it's the technology side, whether it's the vendor relationships you have, whether it's the certifications you have, whether it's the regulatory environment, um, you have to stay on top of that. And the more you do that, the, the more you're going to differentiate yourself as a partner. We hear that time and time again from, from the channel in our conversations. Wow. So what you're, you're really saying is that probably one of the, the key drivers around adoptions of solutions like our very free services XDR or co-managed XDR is that was going to be driven by regulation. A lot of it's going to be driven almost, almost by the lawmakers. Yeah, it, it will, because I think adoption, you know, w without that, it can be very much around, you know, what customers demanding because whether, whether they feel they should secure themselves, whereas yeah. when they have to secure themselves, it's a very different situation. And we know that regulation yeah. drives, drives spending in IT, you know, much more than, than other things do. We know that, you know, cloud regulations around sovereignty are going to, in, in the EU, for example, are going to drive spend on data center spending from hyperscalers in the EU, which is going to drive spend from customers on uh, clouds that are sovereign within the EU where they can secure. And that themselves will also make them feel more secure about where their data is and, and whether it's being shared. It will be exactly the same in, in the security space as well. Um, it's driven not just by awareness, not just by unfortunate breaches and hacks and things like that, um, but government regulation always brings the hammer down on, on the spending. Robin, brilliant, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Very interesting to see what's now probably different to what before driving the demand for the solutions that we're talking about um, um, in this um, recording. So thank you so much for joining us this morning, Robin. As always, an absolute pleasure and great to hear your insights, your knowledge and your experience. My pleasure. Thanks, Cameron. Take care. Bye bye. I hope that Robin has given you a view into the market dynamics we are seeing around SaaS business models in the channel. But now let's move to the cybersecurity and product experts. Next up are two of our leader, leading senior sales engineers and huge contributors to the success of our worry-free services standard, advanced XDR and co-managed XDR solutions, Amin Beluedge and David Byrne. Today we are joined by two of our senior SEs and two people that know everything about worry-free services in various versions, David and Amin. So guys, can we first speak about the significance of some of the recent ransomware attacks that we have seen and some of the major players um, in the management and monitoring market? One of the consequences of these attacks seems to be the huge increased scrutiny of the security of these partners coming from their customers, whether they be traditional partners, VARs, MSPs, MSSPs, or even PSPs. And customers now want to know more than ever, um, are they the targets? And is it their partners that are now the, they say the honeypots or the weak points for, um, for these cyber, cyber criminals, the targets? So 
How can we at Trend Micro, via Worry Free Services, appease the concerns of our partners and their customers? And Dave, we might start with you. Sure. Um, I mean, the first thing that we've put down there for our MSP enterprises and partners alike, but also channel-based customers and all of the other type of enterprises out there, is a very stringent set of controls that are there to address what you first asked about, which is ransomware. Um, behavioral monitoring layer is something that you will find in uh, your worry-free for MSPs, but also all of the other uh, enterprise products. More recently, what we've seen is that there was a massive ransomware attack that was targeting specifically uh, MSPs through Kaseya. Um, now, Kaseya is an RMM vendor, and of course, a lot of MSPs today, you know, they use and consume these RMM tools. Now, Kaseya being in the limelight, it's not, a, it's not you know, oh, bad on Kaseya. Every single piece of software and tooling that an MSP uses on a large scope is going to be the focus and target of a ransomware gang simply because they are honeypots yeah. to those organizations. Beyond that, you've seen Conti and Reval teams attacking the Irish health system. They, you know, Conti, I believe, were hitting banks, you know, water infrastructures. It goes so well beyond that. But, I mean, maybe you could uh, help me out a little bit with kind of talking about what, what we offer for the ransomware capabilities in, in Worry Free. Yeah, thank you, David and Gary, for having me. So if we look at Worry Free services, often we talk about layered protection. And for some reason, we explain to customers that with internal micro solutions, including worry fee services, of course. We believe that the layered approach is the first or the best uh, approach to tackle these issues. So starting with simple signatures. Why simple? Because it's proactive and we can tweak it, we can add it, we can, we can, we can control it in, uh, in a, a quick, uh, quick way. And the second, we look at the layered approach in terms of intelligence. So behavior monitoring, as David mentioned, and let's come back four years ago to the eternal blue era. So it was, I think, in 2017. We had around 30 cases. The most of them, they were customers were protected, thanks to the machine learning, predictive machine learning. Because without doing nothing from our end as a vendor, what if services and Office can at that time, if I allow myself to uh, mention the names uh, of the solutions, were actually capable of blocking that threat. And it did the boss. We all know it, right? Until now, Etna Blue is still actor when it comes to the SMB uh, exploit mm -hmm. and so on. Now, when we come back to, for example, Kaseya, without doing anything with what if services, we were able to detect uh, a variant of that attack. Now, if we move back to the XDR, then we allow our customers and their partners, for example, whether they're MSPs or, may, or whether they're channel managing the solutions, thanks to the XDR, they can proactively sweep and look for any indicator of compromise. And this is very active from our side because we have the tools, they are deployed right there. Customers or their partners need to uh, use them in order to stay protected. I think as well, the, the important thing, just to get back on that initial question, Gary, where you asked about you know the vast complexity and the array and the different ways they can come in. I mean, those two layers that we employ, behavior monitoring and machine learning, are all about dissecting the anatomy of a not, never seen before ransomware or a script or whatever. And you know, without and it's not just about Kaseya, as I said, it's a, it's yeah. any vulnerable software that the MSP uses. And tomorrow, next week, next month, it could be anything. Yes, we had IPS rules in there for the print nightmare stuff and for the zero logon stuff that we've seen recently. And not a lot of vendors have that IPS capability. Like I mean said, this multi-layer interconnectivity where one layer is telling the other, that was bad, please block it on the other layers, you know? This is kind of what where MSPs will get the real large advantage from using something like Worry Free at the base without yeah. looking at the higher tier of the offerings even, you know? So if we stick with that point around what we talk about in relation to the reaction of Kaseya, um, and I think it's something that needs to be applauded, they seem to have a playbook in place, they shut down servers within an hour, and it mitigated a hell of a lot of, let's be honest, what our partners and our customers might have been dealing with without their proactive approach. 
And we're seeing the necessity of this element of having a playbook in place ready for this to happen. But on the other end, what you're saying, Dave, the necessity of being able to have a knowledge of the features and functionalities of the solution itself to make sure that you have the right things enabled to combat, combat these type of, what we're saying, supply chain attacks in the, in the world of MSPs. I mean, just for you though, like you guys, and maybe the two of you, are, you're, you're talking to partners and customers every day. Um, are we seeing real world examples of this happening, you know, where um, partners are being targeted, not just through large RMM or PSA vendors, but just being targeted themselves by malicious software, cyber criminals, ransomware? Is this, a, is this becoming much more regular from a cybersecurity perspective? Yes, we see this more often because actually if, let's say, a customer is a target and it's hard to get, so what the, the, the bad guys or the cyber criminal will do, we look for a bridge, for a, maybe a, a messenger, for a way, for a weak point, how to get there. So instead of going to customer directly, they might use Kaseya, they might use maybe uh, another, to not name maybe other uh, MSPs or yeah. other, uh, other vendors. So it's actually a weakness or a bridge for the cyber criminals to get to the to the end customers to the target through those malicious not vulnerable software to just uh, uh, get my word there and it's very dangerous and from that point well first of all those vendors they are taking the right action so and we have seen that with Kaseya, where they disabled the VSA servers and they gave actually recommendation for their customers and from our side as a security vendor we have implemented more layers so more signatures, more intelligence, and what if his services was there to help. So this is just to come back so what to what is, David mentioned. Yeah. But sometimes you feel like we're, we're, we're talking about the, the, the same two hacks or attacks all the time when it comes to solar winds. I can see it, but that's because it's specific to MSPs. But we must remember, which is probably the scary element of that, months ago, these were not household names. People did not know these companies. So the question, next question is, how far were we away from when the household names, the big logos become, where the, the, the catchment area goes beyond 25,000 MSPs to millions and millions of potential customers? We're not far away from that at all. Um, that can happen to anyone. You look at the likes of ticketing systems, RMM tools, yeah. accounting packages, asset management tools, mail platforms, gateway proxy solutions, everything that they offer is literally probably you know a day and a half away of someone getting just what they need just to get that rudimentary access wow. and what it means talking about then from there on in it's the typical normal vulnerable items once you get in that they can exploit and move silently around but having something like an xdr tool set yeah. in line immediately it's it's not just looking for noisy malware it's not just looking for noisy ransomware it's looking at behavioral movements lateral movements and it's flagging to the msp there's an event you should pay attention to it might not necessarily be malware but it's showing you so much more intelligence in the telemetry that it's giving you that it increases your speed and your ability to react almost ahead of the game so let's stick with that for a second dave when you talk about worry free xdr which you're referencing here at the moment you know, I certainly, and on the kind of sales and marketing side, I see so much conversation and interest around XDR, but I sometimes feel much of it's based in the fact that many partners feel like we, we need it, we probably need it, but are not 100% sure exactly what it is or what it does. So can we maybe stick with you there? Give us an overview of what Worry for XDR is, its core features and functionalities, and essentially from a partner, how it works and benefits them. Well. To a partner, what XDR almost does is it cuts off half the requirement of needing a SOC. Now, we have SOC as a service with a co-managed XDR, yeah. which maybe we can talk about again. But just to focus back on um, what that XDR tooling is doing for the MSP, it's almost like the first time in the industry. Now, at the start of the year, we talked about this is coming, right? But today, MSPs are using this capability. Yeah where they can have an incident occur in a customer site that has maybe originated in Dropbox, Google Drive, SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, Salesforce, G Drive, and Office 365, uh, e uh, which is the online email solution, obviously. And for the very first time, when an incident occurs, the XDR solution reacts, draws a root cause analysis, shows from the Outlook inbox back to the file that was described, what it did, where it went, any URLs it tried to go to, any files it tried to grab, things that it ran on the command line. It maps everything. Now, just from what I'm describing to that point, you've already spent about six to seven grand sending an engineer on site, trying to correlate, trying to answer that question for your client. And of course, if you can't answer that question for your client, 
how confident are they going to be in you as an MSP? Right. So this tooling has been built with all of that mindset uh, as its foundation to make sure that it fits the need of an MSP, to allow them to answer root cause analysis, to be able to have a response capability, hitting a button, cleaning the infection off all endpoints at once, and also inoculating the email tier at once without logging into 365 or contacting the mail administrator or annoying the customer, none of that. Wow. So it's a huge level of detect and response capability that necessarily they wouldn't have had before. Okay, so if we take that then a step further, and actually by taking a step further, I just want to take a slight step back because when I came into this business first, one of the key things we had to do was I suppose address the idea or the perception, you know, worry-free services was just a small SB, almost AV type solution. But what you guys are describing here is just so robust. It's, it's enterprise quality. And just for our viewers to kind of, you know, finish this off, I mean, maybe we just give them a quick overview of probably the next step here. Because when an MSP looks at their evolution as a managed service provider, they're trying to get to that SOC capability. Let's be honest, whether it's aspirational or real, that's where they want to get to. So we've got worry-free co-managed XDR. I wonder from your perspective, I mean, can we just give our viewers just a quick overview of what that does um, and the, the abilities, I suppose, in essence, it gives partners? Okay, good point, Gary. So when we talk about co-managed XDR, so the offering from Plan Micro, so basically we are sitting behind the partner, backing up the partner 24-7, 30, 60, 365 days, and this is basically gives this ability to Cloud Micro to monitor uh, customers' environment on behalf of their partners. Because right now we do have MSPs in phase one. Maybe they don't have SOC at all. They don't have the skills. They don't have the engineers. It is expensive. Uh, they require skills. They require maybe infrastructure. It's not only about hiring one person. Because to fill up one position of a SOC analyst, as an example, you need probably five people five expensive people to fill up one position 24 seven. That's very expensive. While we come with the co-managed um, offering, so we fill up that gap for the partner and we monitor 24 seven with what? With any noteworthy event or maybe incident, which occurs if it's something maybe uh, not really that, um, how to call it, not that advanced, okay, we move on. So nothing happened. And then if something needs investigation, the team is able to take an action from uh, quarantining the file to actually stopping an email to isolating an endpoint. Mm -hmm. And the most important to get in touch with the partner to inform him what is happening, whether it's at midnight, Friday evening, Saturday morning, this is our job to keep customers safe. Guys, just, and I could talk to you guys all day about this, but just to kind of bring it to a close, um, I know we've often have conversations, Dave, and I mean, we often have conversations and I often find you guys are so involved with this solution that you kind of have your own favorite elements of it, if you know what I mean. Um, so maybe if we start with you, I mean, if you kind of had to have one feature of functionality within this solution that you say to partners, this is my leading selling point. What would it be for you? And then we go to you, Dave, what would it be for you? But I mean, let's put you in the spot. What, what's that key feature, that key functionality, whether it's services, services standard, um, advanced XDR or co-managed, but what's that one thing you always zero in on? Well, it's, the, the answer is quite obvious. I will go for the co-managed, for the peace of okay. mind and for optimized security, because mm -hmm. I want to sleep at night. I know that okay. someone is looking after my environment. For me, then it would have to be that, I would agree with the mean, yeah, co-manage is a great tool to sell and that and, and it's you know, the MSP sort of kind of goes, ah, the responsibility is now yours, thank you. But for me, I would say it's more the ecosystem itself. The, I, you know, I look around Trend Micro and I look at the rest of the enterprise products and the amazing capabilities they offer. But even if we look at our tier three and our tier sorry, our tier two and tier one MSPs that use enterprise focus, there is not a complete built, solidified, finalized solution ready yet for that those types of enterprise. For me, this model is completely ready for all tier three MSPs, no question. Yeah, and if I had to finish up and say my favorite part of it is that we have a solution that runs from 
the same solution with different versions that addresses the needs of people that are just starting out as MSPs that brings you right up to that SOC or SOC as a service capability. It's like the evolution of an MSP is matched by the various different versions of this solution. Guys, thank you so much for joining us again. Absolutely love hearing the passion and love getting the knowledge and experience that you both have. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you all enjoyed it. And thank you all out there for listening. Stay safe and stay secure. Amin and David just gave us a view of what we are seeing from a cybersecurity point of view and the solution that we believe will best protect you and your customers in these unpredictable times. But at the end of the day, one of the key things that our partners ask us is one very simple question when it comes to worry-free services and its various versions, and that is, how do we sell it to our customers? So who better to give you advice on this than the person that leads our team of successful MSP account managers, Mr. Ken Crowley. Hi, my name is Ken Crowley and I manage the MSP sales team at Trend Micro based in Cork, Ireland. Today I would like to discuss with you how to position worry-free services suites to your customers. The first thing to talk about here is the evolution of the worry-free solutions and how mature and how advanced they've become over the years. The worry-free solutions have been developed for well over 10 years and worry-free services has been developed to have multiple security layers while at the same time keeping a lightweight agent. It is a cloud-based solution with a cloud console and only requires an internet connection for your customer to be protected. Your customers will no doubt be concerned about the amount of ransomware attacks they've read about in the press and may think that antivirus is antivirus. This is simply not the case. AV is just one of many layers that you will need in your arsenal to stop a ransomware attack. Let us take a quick look at the layers of security in worry-free services. As you can see here, included in the worry-free services solution are two layers machine learning and behavioural monitoring. Both layers were critical in us at Trend Micro being able to protect against the recent zero-day ransomware attack against Kasey and their customers. I would also draw your attention to the virtual patching and other layer added into worry-free services suites at no additional cost. As with most malware, ransomware is typically delivered in email format. Clicking a link, opening an attachment, etc. can lead to such an attack. With more and more people moving to Office 365, it's an ideal time to talk to your customers, not just about endpoint security, but what they're doing to bolster their additional security to their Office 365 environment. Here you can leverage the Trend Micro Cloud App Security Threat Report for 2020, clearly showing the need to have additional security for Office 365. Worry-free services advance is a perfect fit for securing your endpoints and email. I've mentioned previously the recent ransomware attack against Kaseya and how worry-free services, machine learning and behavioural monitoring layers detected and stopped customers using worry-free services suites from the ransomware attack. However, as an MSP providing security as part of your managed service offering, you will need to be able to do more and see more than just, we stopped the ransomware attack. Introducing worry-free XDR, cross-detection and response across endpoints and email. Imagine, if you will, that tomorrow there is another zero-day ransomware attack. Signature-based AV has no chance of stopping this. You get the first notification has been detected on one of your customer's sites. Worry-free XDR will automatically instruct you, the MSP, of the recommended action. Isolate the machine, carry out the root cause analysis, tracing back along the attack, identifying the name, username, endpoint and email it came from, and allow you to see if another user in that customer site also has the same email in their inbox and allow you to quarantine delete that email. But that is not the end. What other customers might be in danger? Worry-free XDR identifies the indicator of compromise. You can then enter that indicator of compromise into the Trend Micro Remote Manager and hunt for that same ransomware variant across all your customers instantly. For you to be able to tell your customers that you will proactively be sweeping their network looking for the latest ransomware attack is a very powerful selling tool. But what if you don't have the manpower, the time, or you don't want to hire a new member of staff to be a full-time security engineer? Then you can offer worry-free co-managed XDR, where a team of Trend Micro experts will work on your behalf to keep your customers safe. So to sum up, worry-free services is a mature product, always evolving and adding additional layers while maintaining that light footprint. It's cloud-based with a cloud console allowing you to secure customers wherever they are, working at home or working remotely. Worry-free services is suitable not just for SMBs, 
but also for large customers. We have customers' sites in their thousands using worry-free services. You can easily combine the endpoint and email security via a single console with worry-free services advanced. Worry-free XDR gives you the ability to threat hunt, proactively stay ahead of ransomware and malicious attacks on your customer sites, conduct root cause analysis and clearly show how, what, when and where potential attacks were stopped. For MSPs that want to offer SOC capabilities but may not have the expertise or time, then worry-free co-managed XDR can give you that expertise and position you as an MSSP. So there you have it, three perspectives all saying essentially the same thing. SaaS is here and its growth is exponential. Thankfully, we at Trend Micro have the SaaS solution that will more than complement your SaaS strategy, and that is worry-free services. I hope you gain some valuable insight. And until next time, stay safe and stay secure.